Thank you to the Altman Foundation and Horace W. Goldsmith Foundation for helping make the podcast possible. Yeah, nailed it. Welcome to our show. Join our flow. It's the 52nd Street Podcast. From the Heart of Hills Kitchen, this is the Podcast, a podcast created by the community at the 52nd Street Project. We're a nonprofit in New York City that partners the young people of Hell's Kitchen with professional artists to create original work that is then offered free of charge to the general public. I'm John Sheehy, Director of Institutional Advancement for the project. As we approach Valentine's Day, we thought that we'd take a look at love, not the candy hearts and flowers, not sunshine and happiness, but that frequent companion of love, heartbreak. First up today, we have a radio story created by former project member Tanaya during last year's radio making program. Radio making, as you may recall, introduces older project members to the art of storytelling through audio. The pieces are conceived, created, recorded, sound designed, and even performed by project members with support from adult volunteers. In Tanaya's piece, she's the host of her own podcast, Now This Is Living. And for her show, she interviews project volunteer Sam Dash and our own associate artistic director, Kat Amoranez, about their experiences with heartache. This is Tanaya, and this is my podcast, Now This Is Living. I'm extremely excited to have the opportunity to do this. I've always wanted to make a podcast, and I've been a very big fan of them. First, I'm going to tell you about myself. I'm a senior in high school, so that is really exciting. Looking forward to college has made my senior year a lot easier. I'm from Hell's Kitchen, Manhattan, where I have the best community within my theater program. I've been a part of it since I was nine. I am in the last program called Teen Ensemble, which has been great. It's been really fun creating with some of my closest friends. Although I have a lot of wonderful things going on in my life, These past few months, I went through a tough time in my life. I went through heartbreak, and it quickly led to depression. Before I get into that, I want to tell a quick story. When I was in middle school and the beginning of my high school career, 9th and 10th grade, I was always, you know, this bubbly person. I didn't really take myself too serious. I always used to see my friends get angry, upset, or even heated. I used to look at them and think, how come I never got to that point of feeling down or mad? Then I got into a relationship, and another part of me came out that I didn't know about myself. Next I have in the studio is Sam Dash, the one everyone adores, even though he separates me from my friends in rehearsal. Sam, why don't you tell us about yourself? (laughs) First of all, I love that introduction. Thank you. Um, uh, what do you want to know? Anything about yourself. What do you okay. do? Um, I'm an actor. Okay. Uh, I just graduated from the NYU graduate acting program about a year and a half ago. Yeah, kicking it in the Big Apple, originally from Boston, Massachusetts. And uh, My family's from Boston. Yeah, no, I remember we bonded over that early on. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I've been in New York about 11 years now. Okay. <laughs> um, Is that enough? Yes. <laughs> okay, first things first, Sam. Yeah. Have you ever been through heartbreak? Yeah, I think if you're human, you've had your heart broken. What was it like for you? <sighs> I bet everyone reacts that way when you say that. They're like, ah, oh, like a big sigh. Um, in high school, probably, is the first time I really experienced what heartbreak is. Can you tell me about that? Sure. Um, I thought I was in love with one of my friends and uh, didn't feel like that was... Um, something I could act on um, because I wasn't sort of clear on my sexuality. It was a male friend. Mm-hmm. And um, and I didn't like that part of myself. Um, 
and I just found myself sort of, you know, lying on the floor of my bedroom, sort of like, woe is me, or driving in my, you know, dad's car around Boston, <laughs> illegally, probably. <laughs> Thanks. Um, <laughs> underage. Uh, just because I, I didn't know what to do with myself. And I think that's sort of one of the things that heartbreak does to you. It sort of makes you feel like things are out of your control and um, and you don't know what to do. Yeah, while going through heartbreak, do you think um, having friends and family is a big help? Yeah, and I mean, not just biological family, because yeah. I think that's different for everyone. For me, I sort of, you know, I moved to New York and I developed, like, my chosen family. Um, you know, moving to New York was also, like, me deciding for myself who I was going to be and what I was going to do with my life. Mm-hmm. And um, I met people and got brought into people's lives who sort of respected that and could jive with that. And those people have been a huge support. Um, and therapy is like a yeah. godsend. Like there are professionals who are like trained to help you mm-hmm. with these kind of big things in your life. So would you recommend somebody going through heartbreak to get therapy? <laughs> No, I would not. I would suggest therapy is great if you feel like you need someone to listen to you and someone to help you figure out your feelings and what's going on in your life. Um, But I wouldn't actively seek out heartbreak. Mm -hmm. But that being said, I do think it's a really important part of a person's life like going back to what I was saying earlier about being human yeah you have to put yourself out there and you have to be willing to have your heart broken in order to get that you know blissful sort of experience of sort of mutual love and respect and joy um what are some things that you learned about yourself I've learned from heartbreak that uh, it brings up other feelings. It brings up feelings that you never thought were connected to the experience of this heartbreak with this individual. It can bring up stuff from your childhood. It can bring up yeah. stuff with friends, whatever. Um, and sometimes that's hard to manage. Like the other stuff <laughs> that uh, gets brought up from heartbreak, uh, I think I've learned that nothing is permanent. Everything is temporary. Yes, sir. (laughs) Um, Like, sort of, this too shall pass. (laughs) I've heard that a lot. Yeah. I mean, and when you hear it from someone who's, like, giving you advice about heartbreak, you're like, screw you. Like, (laughs) I don't need to hear that right now. Or or, um, it it takes time. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, all those sayings and stuff, like, people can say everything in the book to you, and you'll still be like, screw you. You don't know what I'm going through. Like, I feel so alone. You don't Mm -hmm. understand me. Um, But chances are they've gone through something similar. It's just people don't really know what to say in those situations to be helpful. Okay, to help people gain more perspectives on heartbreak, I brought into the studio someone I look up to, Kat. Now, Kat, can you tell me about yourself, please? (laughs) I, first of all, I'm honored that you consider me someone you look up to. That just warms my heart. What else did you want? Um, tell me about yourself. Tell me, uh, I am almost 40. (laughs) And I have worked in theater and education for over 20 years. Okay. And I love my job. Okay. Well, first things first, have you ever went through heartbreak? Yes, 
I have been through many heartbreaks. Okay, now tell me about the breakup. Whichever one you want to pick. Okay. Um, so I have been through many heartbreaks, but one that obviously stands out um, would be when my husband and I got uh, decided to separate. I was in my 20s, late 20s, and we'd been married about two and a half, two years, two months, and two weeks. And um, I realized that he is somebody who wanted to have a family immediately, and I did not. Okay, and how did that breakup make you feel? It, that breakup made me feel terrible. I felt like... I felt like I was less than, um, I felt like I failed him, I felt that I failed myself, I felt like I was fulfilling a prophecy, because when I had gotten married, everyone's response, including my closest friends, were, you got married? Mm -hmm. Why? You don't seem like the type, you don't seem like the marrying type. Um, and I never knew what that meant, and it always kind of made me feel uncomfortable. And so when I got married, I was kind of like, huh, well, look at that, I got married. Um, and so when I, when we decided that it wasn't going to work out, um, I really, I felt like, I felt like I had failed. Um, and I felt really lonely. And do you, would you agree that like, even though you have, like, friends and family, like, you you really truly do feel alone because, like, you're the only one who's feeling what you're feeling. Like, even though, like, other people can go through heartbreak, like, you don't know what they're feeling. Like, you just, like, you just know what you're feeling. Absolutely. You know, I always, um, I always look at it from the point of view of when um, my goddaughter, who was, like, 10 years old or something, had a crush on someone... And they, um, they had a, you know, this person didn't like them. They split up and, um, everyone was saying, oh, you're young, you know? And my perspective was actually, this is the oldest she has been. This is her first breakup. And that's how I perceive it when anybody experiences heartbreak is like, yes, people go through it. But no one is in your skin. No one goes to bed at night with those thoughts in your head. No one has felt the love and the intimacy that that person gave you. And I think that for me, I think for me, heartbreak, I think for every heartbreak I've ever had, there is a little piece of me that kind of dies. You know, I think it's... There's, you learn a lot of lessons, but I still, I still cry about my marriage. And yeah. Um, the heartbreak make you a stronger person, and if so, how? Oh. I don't know if it made me a stronger person. I, I think heartbreak just makes you into a different person. How so? I think that heartbreak for me and the different ways can either um, make me want to change my behavior or to like be different in the choices I make or it can make me (laughs) blame others (laughs) like I want to say that heartbreak is an experience that you go through and then you become a better person for your next partner Um, but I don't think it's that cut and dry, Mm -hmm. you know, um, like I still mourn, you know, I still mourn leaving, uh, a relationship that I, I was very much in love with this person. Um, and in fact, he's married now and he has two kids. And when I 
remember that he's happy and he's got like he lives in a ha- he he owns a house he has cats and he has a f- farm and goats I guess and a <laughs> wife and two kids yeah. I think about that and I go that was the right choice yeah because he got what he wanted and I got what I wanted which is as you know from me my work is really important to me yeah. um and that just would not my life here the project would not have been possible if I was married and I know when some people go through heartbreak they think that you know they will never find someone that made them feel however they made them feel so how how can they like still think that you know them falling in love is still possible I think for me, I have to think of being in love as not being one cup. Like, the in love that I had with my first boyfriend in the fourth grade with Rudy Pimentel will never be replicated ever. That is a kind of love that you will never find. Um, you know, we used to go to the library together. We went to church together, you know, yeah. and we were in the fourth grade. So there was none of the other complications that come with that. All we did was hang out. Yeah. I think we held hands. <laughs> but that's like, and then when that ended because he moved and I was really heartbroken. Mm. I, he told me the day before he was moving yeah. at graduation and I think that if it can't for me can't be about trying to fill that cup that Rudy Pimentel like you know was in it you got to get a whole new cup you know mm-hmm. and like so now I've just got a whole cabinet of cups so what are some things that you did during heartbreak that you don't recommend others to do <laughs> <laughs> Uh, this I can answer. There are several things that I, um, what I would call acted out um, in my heartbreak that I would not recommend others do. Or, see, I, ju- I also just think that I'm the kind of personality where I don't believe that it works to tell someone that the oven is hot and then expect them to not touch it. I believe that you give the, you let the person know it's hot and that I'll yeah. be right here with the milk if you need mm-hmm. it as soon as you put your hand on it because I knew you were going to. Yeah. Um, I think that as human beings, we, we learn lessons through experience, you know. And that there are certain things I did that I would not recommend because they had long-term consequences. One of them is that credit cards is not free money. And things will not make you feel better in the end. Oh. Um, for all the people out there going through a heartbreak, how can they try and see, you know, like the light at the end of the tunnel while going through this? First of all, I think that being in love is so much fun. And I would encourage everyone to fall in love, knowing that it will you know, there's a possibility of heartbreak at the end. Okay, but so you think being in love is worth it even though... Absolutely. Being in love... I disagree, but... <laughs> <laughs> being in love... Being in love is so much fun when you're in it. Yeah. It's so much fun. It's great. I mean, it does... It's a little bit challenging when, like, you're out of the in loveness and you're reflecting on it and you're like, was that in love or was that, like, me being insane? <laughs> like... Mm-hmm. um. I've done really some ridiculous things for love, um, but I've also done some really amazing things for love. Like, I when I'm in love, I I bring out this person inside me that is really super giving and doesn't want anything back comes out. Um, I was a real. Let me tell you, my last long term relationship, my gift giving, like was amazing. Amazing. I want to be in a relationship with me. Um, for real. <laughs> just for those gifts. Um, right. I do think it's worth it. But 
Uh, it does come with, you know, what life comes with, which yeah. is heartbreak. So you think it's it's it will work if you spend some time by yourself before getting into another relationship? I hate to say it, but yes. Uh, <laughs> I think it's important to allow yourself to mourn. It's like let yourself... I would have liked to let myself be sad. Um, I think that one thing that I have learned in my lifetime is that sad is not forever. And I think when I was, whenever I've been in heartbreak, you always feel like it's going to be forever. And I would act out of fear. And so I would try to find something to get me out of that feeling as soon as possible. But, you know, in the times that I have managed to sit down and reflect on that relationship, it has really taught me more about myself, you know, and patterns of behavior. At what point did you think to yourself that I'm actually over this and I'm happy? I... I don't think I will ever be over my marriage ending. In fact, right now I'm trying to prevent myself from crying. Yeah. I'm going to stare at this light in order to do that. Um, I don't think I'll ever be over mourning the end of my of that relationship. But I am happy. In fact, this is the right now in my life, this is the happiest I have ever been. It is um the most authentic I have ever been. It is um I am the most fulfilled. But that's the thing about the human experience is that you can be happy and feel sad at the same time. You can go on with your life and still feel a little bit broken. Um, I think that it allows... I know this is probably not what you want to hear, mm -hmm. but I will say it anyway. <laughs> but your heartbreak is going to help someone else someday. The beginning of my junior year, I started dating this girl. Very quickly, feelings started becoming stronger and stronger between us, and I fell in love. I was with her for close to a year, and there was a lot of blissful moments, but a lot of rough moments as well. I always found myself being down or losing interest in things that I loved before the relationship, like basketball or, or even being this bubbly person that I was before. With that being said, the beginning of my senior year in late September, we broke up. I was crushed. The months after that was very, very difficult to deal with. I felt dumb. I felt like I got robbed of my happiness and my personality was kind of, you know, taken from me. And something that I don't ever want to go through again. I went into a desperate state. I would find myself come home, not eating. You know, my friends all used to ask me, you know, what's wrong tonight? Talk to me. And my answer would always be, I'm okay, I'm okay. But deep down inside, I knew I wasn't. I think it's very easy for, for you to say I'm okay to others and to know that you're not okay. Cause you know, you don't wanna be a burden to people. You don't wanna mess up their happiness. So, you know, you just keep your feelings to yourself and kind of suppress it. You know, I remember this one moment where I was in school and it was toward the end of the day. And, you know, throughout the day, I felt my heart and, you know, it was real, real, real heavy. And I had like this pit in my stomach so, you know, I went to my teacher that I was pretty close to, and I just broke down. I was very fortunate enough to have some of the best friends to, you know, have a shoulder to cry on, literally, and just people to speak with. 
But I think the worst part about heartbreak is no matter the friends or family you have, you truly just feel alone. I think what helped me get out of that desperate state and to start moving forward and to be happy is simply letting go and believing, you know, you will get over this. The advice I got was it takes time. And it's so true. You know, when somebody tells you that advice, you just want to say, screw them, you know. But as you go through the heartbreak, you realize that it's true. Like, it just takes time. Take time for yourself. Go out with your friends. Throw yourself into so much stuff. And, you know, just keep busy. And putting it into perspective that there are so many people out there. And you have your life ahead of you to feel so many things. I want to read a quote. It's by Ben Higgins. It says, I think vulnerability, authenticity, genuineness... And that rawness is attractive to so many. I think it's very rare that we're able to share those moments together. So as a result, no, I don't think it's depressing. I actually just think it feels like life. That was Now This Is Living by Tanaya. Thank you to Sam Dash and Kat Almoranez for agreeing to be interviewed. Thank yous also go out to Sofia Zukowski for working with Tanaya on her radio making piece, and to composer Zonia Tsang for providing original music. And if music be the food of love, we'll play on. Up next is a performance from our song-making concert this past November. Project member Antonella teamed up with Lydia Brecken, from NYU's Tisch School of the Arts Musical Theater Writing Program. Together they wrote Goodbye, a duet about a couple being torn apart when one of them must move away. Here to sing the song are Janelle Chu and Neil Tyrone Pritchard. It's hard to say goodbye to the person you love. She looked me in the eye, but she didn't say goodbye. I saw tears in her eyes, but she tried not to cry goodbye. But then she had to move. It was all great and then I had to move. I can't see her. I can't see him in my mind. I'm not fine. I'm not fine. fine. I already. Say goodbye to the person you love. I felt hatred that we have to.
That was Janelle Chu and Neil Tyrone Pritchard performing Goodbye, with lyrics by Antonella and music by Lydia Brecken. The song-making concert band also included Pablo Concha, Sean Eads, Nathan Rebley, and Enzo Vega, with music director Avi Amon. We would also like to send out special thanks to Berkeley NYC at Power Station and Matt Soros and Ryan Nava for recording these songs for us. If you want to hear more songs from our song-making program, while also financially supporting the 52nd Street Project, we hope you'll consider attending Game Changers, our gala on Monday, May 4, starting at 6.30 at Capital here in Manhattan. This year, we're celebrating a couple of key players at the project, Crystal Dickinson and Brandon Dearden, both of whom have performed with us. The gala will feature playful songs with lyrics written by our songmakers. For inquiries and reservations, contact info at 52project.org. And now for the credits. The project members featured in this episode were Tanaya and Antonella. The adult volunteers featured in this episode were Sam Dash, Lydia Brecken, Janelle Chu, and Neil Tyrone Pritchard. The podcast theme song was created by Justin and his smart partner, Eric March, and performed by Miranda Anderson, Rebecca, and Nicole. The project logo was created by Iris Brown. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Just search the 52nd Street Project and look for 5 and 2 in our logo. The 52nd Street Project is supported by public funds from New York City's Department of Cultural Affairs and the New York State Council on the Arts. The 52nd Street Project is a nonprofit organization, and we're able to do what we do because of generous folks like you. Please go to our website, 52project.org, slash donate, to check out how you can support the project. Every little bit helps. Our next playmaking production, Smoke and Mirrors, The Tricky Plays, will be March 20 to 22, so grab your free tickets today. And again, if you're interested in this year's gala fundraiser, Game Changers, on Monday, May 4, please contact us at info at 52project.org, and you can visit www.52project.org for more information. We'll be back in your feed next month with a new episode of The Projcast. Nothing rhymes with mud on the 52nd Street Projcast.